Hello, in this video I want to talk to you and just give you a brief overview and some advice about essay questions. So essay questions as opposed to problem questions. So I've got a couple of examples behind me which we'll look at in a moment. But first of all, just a couple of broad kind of do's and don'ts when it comes to essay questions. The first one is, uh, in terms of a don't, is it's very common for, for students to think about essay questions in terms of how can I fit in everything I know about a topic to an answer? So because essay questions tend to be slightly more open-ended than problem questions, then students will often revise for um, essay questions in terms of I've read these articles on this particular topic or I've read and understood these cases. And so when it comes to answering the question, naturally the essay answer becomes how can I find a way of including this information that I've learned within my answer to this question. Now that's quite normal, but it's something that you need to avoid and, and quite simply because in doing so, you don't answer the question. You end up simply discussing the topic right a textbook like we have um, but you don't want to do that of course within your essay question because the essay is always more specific than that. Um, also another thing to avoid which a number of students do is the temptation to write a kind of a model plan in relation to various essays so that you hope when the exam comes up or when the coursework comes up that you'll be able to recreate the essay using your model plan. Again all of these techniques take you away from being responsive to exactly what the questions aren't asking you to do. And it's that that I really want to impress upon you within this short video. So when you're looking at essay questions, there are two things that are quite normal that you should be looking to do. The first one is to identify the topic. So if, for example, you had a coursework question that had one of these questions, or an essay question in the exam which had one of these questions, it's quite normal to look for the topic first. So you basically skim read the question, you see the words intention, recklessness. Okay, so this essay question is broadly about defining mens rea terms. You might then look at the second question and think, okay, we're looking here at the law of rape. So the topic is in terms of sexual offences and particularly the offence of rape. So again, you identify an essay by the topic that's outlined. Now this is normal, but the point is it should only be a first step. If you're writing a coursework question, it's a first step to identify the area of law so that you can then go away and do your research in relation to that area of law. It helps you identify the relevant articles, the relevant case law, etc., in order to build your background knowledge. In relation to um, an exam question, the topic will of course help you. There are certain topics which you'll be more comfortable with or less comfortable with, and so you'll be looking to identify the questions in those areas that you're most comfortable with and you want to ask, answer questions on. Now, the thing to remember then is identifying the topic is fine, but it's only the first step. The second step and the most important one is then to identify the debate. And it's the debate within an essay question which is your focus and provides your structure for actually answering that essay question. So let's look at that in relation to these two. So the first question is, the only truly effective and just way to distinguish intention from recklessness is to define intention so as to mean aim, purpose or desire and nothing more Discuss. Now this structure of an uh, essay question is quite common. Basically we have a relatively controversial quote and then we have discuss at the end. Now what that means is not tell me everything you know about intention and recklessness, but rather engage with that question itself. Imagine yourself sometimes not so much as a law student, but as a normal person. Someone asks you in the street, why is there why is there a difference between intention and recklessness? Why do you have these two different terms? And why is it that some kind that intention isn't defined in the way that we would in normal sense understand it as simply aim, purpose or desire? That's the debate that you need to engage with. That's the controversial part of that statement that your essay needs to deal with. And there are many ways in which you can do that. So you can, for example, then think, okay, is, is it true to say that intention isn't defined simply in terms of aim, purpose or desire? Well, yes, it is. Direct intention is defined in these terms, but oblique intention, as defined within the case of Woolen, is defined as something as a virtual certainty, it's foreseen by the defendant as a virtual certainty, and then the court may choose or a jury may choose to find an intention. So essentially that's our debate. The debate here is why do we need oblique intention? Wouldn't it be simpler simply to separate intention defined as direct intention from recklessness covering everything else. 
So we have that debate, and now we need to understand the terms of that debate. And again, for that, we look back to the question. Now, the question says the only truly effective and just way to distinguish intention from recklessness is in this way. So those are our key words that we can then define our debate around. And actually, there are multiple ways we could structure this kind of an essay, but one quite reasonable way is to look at these two things separately. So in terms of what's effective, what's user-friendly, what's clear, actually distinguishing in the way that quote says would be good. Oblique intention is very difficult to apply in practice. There are similarities between oblique intention and recklessness. So in terms of effectiveness of the law, in terms of clarity of the law, then this neat separation between recklessness and direct intention is very desirable. There's a lot to be said for it. However, in terms of things being just, that's much more debatable because Yes, there have been academics, and this is where some of your journal reading can come in. There have been a number of academics that have argued that just direct intention should be required. We see that sometimes in relation to inchoate offences and attempts liability in particular. We also see that sometimes in, de in um, debates about the mens rea of murder, that actually if you want the most serious crime, it should be a direct intention only, not including oblique intention. But equally on the other side, there are those that argue that oblique intention is just as culpable as direct intention. The classic um, plane bomber scenario whereby I insure the plane, my intention is to explode the plane with a bomb so as to claim that insurance, but I also know inevitably that the passengers on board will die. Yes, I don't, it's not my aim, purpose or desire to kill the passengers, but I know it's going to happen. And to many people's minds, that's just as culpable as if it was my aim, my purpose or my desire. And this is all a debate about the justice of this distinction. That's our debate. You find the topic, sure, but your structure and your analysis is about the debate. Equally here in relation to this second question, Although the law of rape has modernised in certain respects, it remains in urgent need of reform or in need of urgent reform. This is our debate. The first half of the sentence is uncontroversial. In the 2003 Act, the law of rape has modernised. So there's nothing debatable there, there's no clash. But the second half, there is clash, this idea of it being in urgent need of reform. Now, if you saw this and you simply thought about the topic, you would write me an essay about rape and about the law of rape, what is the law of rape, what are the elements of that offence. Now, you might occasionally touch on reform, but I'm not asking you for that. I'm not asking you for um, a textbook analysis of what rape is. I'm asking you specifically about the issue of reform. Now, for that, that should be the structure of your of your debate, the structure of your essay. And there are many issues within the law of rape you could pick out. You could look at intoxication issues in terms of consent of the victim. You could look at deception issues, which is particularly, particularly relevant at the moment. You could look at the mens rea of rape and how it contrasts to the subject of mens rea required in other areas of the law. You could look at the proliferation of um, different types of sexual offences, perhaps, and how that impacts the law of rape. You could look at the label of rape, so that, um, and to what extent that impacts the law. So there are lots of choices here about this idea of urgent need for reform, but those are the ones that you need to pull out. Those are the issues that answer the question. And finally, you could have a bit of a play around with the idea here of urgency. If you wanted, within your conclusion, for example, you could say there are these areas that are necessary for reform, but whether that reform is in urgent need, the idea of perhaps uh, hasty legislation leading to less uh, useful legislation, this could be something you want to pull out and discuss. In terms of the reform as well, remember, it's a debate. It's not simply, this is a list of the reforms that must come into play. You can say, it looks like, for example, the deception issue is a problem. These are ways in which the cases, or these are ways in which academics have sought to resolve that problem. And then you can evaluate how effectively they've done so, or whether further need for reform is urgent or not. So the simple message to take from this is, start with topic, that's absolutely fine, that's normal. But after you've identified the topic of question, identify the debate. And it's that debate which is the structure of your essay. Now, we do this, of course, when we discuss reform within every chapter of the textbook. And more particularly within the electronic resources, we provide sort of model um, type plans for essay type, uh, questions in relation to each of the chapters within the textbook as well. So look at those for, again, application of this rule. Look at the topic first, but structure your debate around the controversial part of the question. Thank you.